Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to yet another session on the Merit Shine channel and we are looking at another rapid fire session. This time 75 questions covering the first three weeks of January 2022 from the perspective of any kind of bank exam that you're looking to attempt, especially in the context of the mains. We have the IBPS PO mains coming up, so it's extremely relevant for that. And of course, any other bank exams that you're willing to take, this general awareness, banking awareness, financial awareness session will definitely add value to you there. 75 questions in as quick a time as possible. And of course, if you're looking for some of the earlier sessions that we have conducted on the series, then uh, the link is available on the description. We can check out the sessions conducted for October, November and December 2021 as well. And this session is going to further add on from the perspective of January 2022. So as always, the format is very simple. One question followed by the answer to that question. And we'll try and cover 75 questions as quickly as possible. If you have a paucity of time and if you have a flow hai, wo mein aata hai, the way I proceed forward, agar aap apna pace maintain kar rahe, if you're able to maintain the pace, then what I would recommend is watch it at a higher speed so that you can cover the questions quickly and save some time from that perspective as well. But the important thing that I always keep saying is ensure that you watch the entire session because 75 good questions have been covered here. We again do a mix of one-liners, uh, rather the MCQs from a one-liner perspective and also the statement-based questions as well. Now, when I look at statement-based questions, uh, the important aspect is that the kind of questions that I try to bring in, they try to cover the holistic information about that particular news item, right? So if you look at all the statements given in that particular question, automatically that news almost gets covered completely as well. So that is the context with which your uh, statement-based questions have been added in this session as well as with the earlier sessions of October, November and December 2021. And if you watch till the end, there is one more bonus question that is awaiting you as well, right? So what are we waiting for? Let's jump right in. Right, so let's kickstart the session with the first question for the day. We're talking about the Indomitable, a working woman's notes on life, work and leadership, a fantastic autobiography, which I would definitely recommend to every single banking aspirant. And the answer in this case is it has been written by Arundhati Bhattacharya, uh, SBI chairman and obviously the current, uh, uh, what do you say, country head from the perspective of Salesforce as well, which is a global company from that context. So again, uh, a very inspiring lady and she's done a fantastic job in this book as well. Moving on to the next question, according to the data released by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, which is MOSPI, India's benchmark inflation rate measured by the CPI has increased to what percentage year on year in December 2021? So if I remember correctly, it is definitely above the 5% mark and uh, even though it is within the guideline of the RBI of uh, 4 plus minus 2%, uh, pretty soon if it crosses or breaches the 6% barrier, RBI has to take some initiative. So the number here that we're looking at from the month of December perspective is 5.59%. That's what it is as far as the benchmark inflation rate is concerned. It basically increased to 5.59% year on year in December 2021, highest in the last five months. And this was at 4.91% in November 2021, right? Moving on to question number three. Uh, so basically we're talking about the IHS market limited report. So basically India will expect it to overtake Japan as Asia's second largest economy by 2020. And I think the year is wrong here. I think it was 2030. India's nominal GDP measured in USD terms uh, projected uh, basically an increase from dollar 2.7 trillion in 2021 to basically uh, 8.4 trillion by 2030. So there's almost like a uh, more than three uh, triple fold increase overall expected here. I think this is correct. India's consumption expenditure will double from uh, 1.5 trillion dollars in 2020 to 3 trillion dollars by 2030. So again, even if you go by common sense, all the other numbers are from the perspective of 2030 year, right? So this can't be 2028 suddenly. So this has to be 2030 as well. So by common sense, the answer in this case is only two and three are correct. One is incorrect because it, it is expected to overtake Japan as Asia's second largest economy by 2030. All right, moving on to the next question. According to the Reserve Bank of India, which banks will continue to be identified as domestic systemically important banks? So DSIBs, the banks, jo agar fail ho gaye, to then banking system hill jayega, too big to fail. Kaun se banks hain ye? SBI, ICICI, HDFC, all three of them are definitely there. If you look at the overall uh, benchmarks, right? So basically there are multiple buckets that have been created. Bucket 5 matlab sabse important, then 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is sequence mein aata hai. Yahan pe aapka SBI and here you have your ICICI and HDFC bank, right? So all these three are domestic systemically important banks. And agar hum baat kare, domestic systemically important institutions from a insurance standpoint, right? So usme kaun kaun sa aata hai aapka? So general insurance company, then you have your LIC and your new India assurance. Ye aate hain aapke domestic systemically important insurance companies, right? So ye aapko yaad rakhna hoga. Okay, moving on to question number five now. We've covered four, which is all the three. Now, question number five. 
According to the recent data, what is the amount of gold that India has imported in 2021? Bahut paisa kharch kiya hai is pe. So 55.7 is the amount in terms of dollar worth billion, right? That's the India's gold imports, right? And it has basically reached a new high altogether. Moving on to question number six, which of the following is an incorrect option for the recent data of the Union government for the exports and imports? अगर हम ओवरऑल एक्सपोर्ट्स की बात करें बोथ मर्चेंटाइज एंड सर्विसेज कंबाइंड इन डिसम्बर 2021, दीज आर बेसिकली एस्टिमेटेड टू बी यूएस डॉलर 47.87 बिलियन ओके देन इट सेज ओवरऑल इम्पोर्ट्स इन डिसम्बर आर एस्टिमेटेड टू बी यूएस डॉलर 72.37 बिलियन टॉकिंग अबाउट दी ओवरऑल एक्सपोर्ट्स मर्चेंटाइज एंड सर्विसेज कंबाइंड इन अप्रिल टू डिसम्बर पीरियड दे आर एस्टिमेटेड टू बी डॉलर फोर सेवेंटी बिलियन देन ऑप्शन डी टॉक्स अबाउट मर्चेंटाइज एक्सपोर्ट्स फॉर द पीरियड अप्रिल टू डिसम्बर Uh, that is basically at uh, dollar 301.38 billion and then estimated value of the services exports for uh, the month of december alone is us dollar 20.07 billion so these are the options that are given to us now if i remember correctly in this uh, i think uh, while the export numbers are not that low uh, import numbers seem to be okay so i think uh, there was overall a current of account deficit which is basically the difference between uh, the value of your imports minus your exports right so obviously it will be a deficit when imports is greater than your exports and it will be a surplus when your exports is greater than your imports right in this case since imports are definitely higher so there's a current account deficit for the month of december which i remember seeing but i don't think uh, the overall export value was so low i think it was slightly on the higher side if i remember correctly so i think this option is incorrect let's look at the answer so yeah it's not 47.87 but it is 57.87 billion that's the overall value of your merchandise and services exports put together which basically is exhibiting a positive growth of 25.05% over the same period last year and a positive growth of 23.35% over december 2019 that's a good positive uh, indication for india right moving on to the next question question number 7 uh basically talking about the world bank's global economic prospects report right so now it's saying that it showed a sharp decline in the global growth from 5.5% in uh, 2021 to 4.1% in 2022 and 3.2% in 2023 now india's annual growth is basically projected at 8.3% in 2021 i think this is correct but for 2022 i think the number is on the slightly higher side so we'll have to cross check this i'm not so conv- convinced about this one I'm talking about globally in advanced economies inflation is at the highest rates in 2008 and that's definitely true so if i look at the options which are correct here only option 2 is incorrect as i said so basically 8.3 is correct but when i talk about 8.5% that is actually 8.7 that is the expected figure in 2022 as per the world bank's global economic prospects report right moving on to question number 8 now are uh, talking about the army day so the indian army basically celebrated its 75th army day on 15th of january 2022 okay the theme was in stride with the future okay the monumental national flag the world's largest national flag made from khadi was displayed alongside the india pakistan border in rajasthan's longewala now if i remember correctly i don't think this was the 75th but it was the 74th army day that was there yeah so that's basically the context so every year 15 january is commemorated as the army day to remember the occasion when general uh, late field marshal k m karyapa took over the command of the indian army again a proud moment for india from general uh, sir f r r busher Uh, he was basically the last british commander in chief in 1949 and uh, obviously uh, uh, kariyappa became the first indian commander in chief of the independent india so this is again a uh, landmark moment in india but it was not 75th but it was 74th this year moving on to question number 9 birju maharaj uh, again a very very famous personality in the context of dancing and more so in the context of kathak he has obviously choreographed a lot of very famous bollywood songs as well he passed away at the age of uh, 83 and condolences poured in for him uh, from across the artistic fraternity and of course bollywood kollywood mollywood and all the other uh, uh, what do you say film fraternities as well so he passed away at the age of uh, 83 and uh, may his soul rest in peace so he was a kathak dancer right so moving on to the next question number 10 we are looking at who's going to be appointed as the chairman and managing director of air india limited and the answer is vikram dev dath who's a 1993 batch ias officer and he's a senior bureaucrat and he will be taking over from rajiv bansal right moving on to question number 11 Which of the following is an incorrect option for the recent visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to the states of Manipur and uh, Tripura? So he inaugurated and laid the foundation stone for uh, I don't think 32, I think it was 22 development projects worth over rupees 4,800 crores in Imphal, Manipur. Then talking about in Agartala, Tripura, 
He basically inaugurated the new integrated terminal building at Maharaja Bir Bikram Airport and will also launch two key development initiatives there. Then three projects will uh, basically be inaugurated under the Imphal Smart City Mission as well. And the PM also laid the foundation stone for the construction of five national highway projects to be built at a cost of more than 1700 crore. And he also inaugurated the steel bridge built over the Barak River on National Highway 37 at a cost of rupees 75 crore. So all these initiatives are indeed correct. But I don't think it was 32, but 22 developmental projects, right? And that's the correct answer in this case, right? So moving on to question number 12 now, uh, Mark Bihu is basically celebrated in which of the states every year on 14th of January. So this is basically the context of uh, Makar Shankranti Pongal which is celebrated across India and Mark Bihu is basically in Assam. That's the context. Now looking at it basically Makar Shankranti which is dedicated to the Surya Devta or the Sun God is basically observed on 14th of January each year and in the case of a leap year it basically uh, is January 15th in that year right. So Makar Shankranti is the day when the sun enters the Capricorn and is commemorated with the tremendous fanfare across the country and basically the farmers across India pay, pay homage to the sun god and pray for a bumper crop. Now, obviously it is known by different names in different states. So, Mark Bihu in Assam, Maghi in Punjab, Sakrat in Haryana, then you have Pongal in Tamil Nadu, uh, Push Sankranti in West Bengal, Sankranti in Andhra Pradesh in Telangana and so on. So, that's the context as far as number 12 is concerned. Right, so moving on to question number 13. On 5th of January 2022, the power ministry successfully completed seven years of distributing and selling LED lights under its flagship Ujala program, which is basically your Unnat Jyoti by affordable LEDs for all. Uh, so you have to look at some of the statements from that context. So Ujala initiative is the world's largest zero subsidy domestic lighting program with over 78 crore LEDs distributed across the country. Now talking about Ujala, the domestic manufacturing of LED bulbs has increased from 1 lakh per month to 10 million per month. I think this itself sounds big, but I think it is bigger than this number. I think it's not 10 million, it's significantly higher than that is what I remember. It also enables to bring down the cost of LEDs for the retail segment through the bulk procurement, which has been reduced by almost 90% between 2014 and 2017. And the amount has basically come down from rupees 310 to rupees 38. So I think this also is correct. So the only problem I have is with the option two. So which is where uh, basically your option two is incorrect. Right. So if I look at it, uh, the correct answer in this case is that it has increased from 1 lakh per month to 40 million per month and that's a huge number. right? And so it basically kind of indicates the success of the Ujala program. Right. So moving on to question number 14 now. So we're talking about the NRI day or the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. So uh, this is basically annually celebrated on the 9th of January which is fine to mark the contribution of the overseas Indian community to the development of India. This is okay. The first ever Pravasi Bharatiya Divas was celebrated on 9th of January 2001. I'm not so sure if it was 2001. I think it was slightly later than that. So I think this is incorrect. On 19th of January 1912, Mahatma Gandhi returned to India from South Africa and became the greatest prophecy. I think here also the context is that this was not the year. I think it was during the time of the World War One that he came back. So I think this year is also incorrect. So if I look at the overall numbers here, option two and three are definitely incorrect. So it is 2003 when the first uh, uh, prophecy Bharti Devas was celebrated. And uh, it was 1915 when Mahatma Gandhi returned to India from South Africa. Right. Moving on to question number 15 now. The National Health Mission Assam, uh, in collaboration with which entity has launched the pilot project Niramay to basically digitize the public healthcare delivery in Assam. So I think definitely Cisco is involved. Uh, I don't think Tata Medical was involved. So it, and more importantly, I think uh, another Indian entity was also involved there. So I think it was uh, uh, Piramal Swastya. I would go ahead with option D, which is A and B. Right. So NHM Assam, in collaboration with Piramal Swasthya, a non-profit organization and Cisco basically launched the pilot project uh, Niramay to digitize the public healthcare delivery in Assam. Right. Moving on to question number 16 now. So talking about CCA, chaired by the Prime Minister, has approved the scheme on GEC, which is a Green Energy Corridor Phase 2 for the intrastate transmission system. Now we have to look at the statements here. So states covered are basically Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh. I don't think Haryana is part of it. Uh, the overall outlay is basically rupees uh, uh, 12,031 crore and the central financial assistance of 33% for the project cost uh, is basically rupees uh, 3970.34 crores as well. So completion period is again 5 years and uh, financial year 2021-2022 to 2025-2026 uh, that's the expectation. So I think both these options are correct. Only problem I have is option 1. So I think uh, in this case uh, options 2 and 3 are correct. So states of all of these are there, but uh, Haryana is not part of this list here. That's the context, right? Moving on to question number 17. The Chief Minister of Gujarat, Bhupendra Patel, basically launched a two-day international conference on Academic Institutions 2022, ICAI 2022. So the conference was held in Gujarat Science City Campus, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. The conference was uh, jointly organized by the Education Department, which is fine, Government of Gujarat, and the Union Ministry of Education. 
Union Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and CBSC. I don't think CBSC was involved here. Uh, so I think this is where it goes wrong. Obviously, during the conference, the CM basically launched the second edition of the Student Startup and Innovation Policy, SSIP 2.0 as the five-year tenure of SSIP 1 will end on 10th of January 2021. So SSIP 2.0 will remain in force till March 2027. So this again is a noble initiative. Uh, 30 MOUs have been signed in the higher and te technical education sector in Gujarat uh, during ICI 2022. Australia, Canada, Norway, UK and France have joined as partner countries for this conference, while the British Council, Australia, India Business Exchange and Institute of International Education uh, basically are the key institutions that have joined as international participants as well. So all of these statements seem to be correct. Only problem I have with is the CBSE being part of this second option. And that is where the correct answer is that all the others are definitely part of the organizing committee, but not CBSC. So that's on 17, right? Moving on to question number 18 now. The Indian Space Research Organization has successfully completed a 720-second qualification test of the cryogenic engine for the Gaganyaan program at the ISRO Propulsion Complex in, and that is basically located at Mahindragiri in Tamil Nadu. And that's the answer in this case, right? So moving on to the next question, number 19. The uh, ICSD, which is the International Committee of Sports for the Deaf, has given the approval to the All India Sports Council of Deaf to basically host the first World Deaf T20 Cricket Championship uh, in which city or which state rather from Jan 10th to Jan 20, 2023. So the answer in this case is that Kerala is the privileged state which has got the approval to conduct the world's first Deaf T20 Cricket Championship. Right, that is going to be in Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala. Right, so and it is expected to see participants from eight countries. Right, moving on to question number 20 now. Uh, talking about the electricity market report of January 2022, uh, which has been released by the International Energy Agency IEA. So, India's power demand is expected to grow at an annual rate of 6.5 percent between 2022 and 2024. Uh, India basically clogged the highest 15% year-on-year growth in power demand during the 2021 calendar year, sharing the stage with China. Uh, the majority of supply growth in the years between 2021 and 2024 is expected in China, which will basically account for half of the net total increase, followed by India, which will be at 12%, Europe will be at, at 7%, and the United States will be at 4%. So that's the overall context in terms of the supply side of it. So the problem that I have here is primarily with option two, because I don't remember the uh, growth in power demand was so steep. It wasn't 15%. It was probably a lower number than that. And if I look at it, the answer in this case is indeed uh, option two is incorrect because you're looking at a 10% year on year growth in power demand in the calendar year. That's the context, right? Moving on to question number 21. Talking about the Ministry of Finance, Department of Economic Affairs, Budget Division has maintained the status quo and retained the interest rates of your small savings schemes unchanged for the fourth quarter Q4 of FY 2022. Uh, that is from January 2022 to March 2022. And this is the same as the third quarter and obviously due to the rising number of COVID-19 cases and the Omicron variant that has basically come up and also the elevated levels of inflation. Now, obviously, this is a good thing for the citizens of India. If I look at the options here, interest rates on various small savings schemes such as your PPF, NSC, term deposits and post office, etc. They remain unchanged from the second quarter of FY21, which is around seven quarters. I think this is fine. The interest rates of uh, small savings schemes are arrived at by using the formula which was given by the Shamala Gopinath committee. I think this is also fine. So the Ministry of Finance can basically revise the interest rates of your small savings schemes in the exercise of powers conferred to it under the Rule 9-1 of the Government Savings Promotion General Rules. But I think it's not 2016, it came in 2018. So this is the incorrect option here. So if I look at the overall situation, yes, uh, only options one and two are correct. Third is incorrect because this basically came out, the ruling came out in 2018. Right, so moving on to number question 22. So talking about the Ministry of Mines, that has basically created a joint venture company called as Khanij Bidesh India, also known as Kabil, right? It is a joint venture of which of these companies? Definitely Hindustan Copper is there, Nalco is also there. And if I remember correctly, it is Mineral Exploration Corporation. These are the three entities put together. Which are the options that fit these three? Yes, this is the one. So I think option D is the correct answer in this case. Right. So basically it is the uh, joint venture of these three and it is called as Kabil, uh, which is also a, a, a Hindi Bollywood movie that came. So Khanij Videsh India is the context, right? Moving on to the next question, number 23. RBI has basically issued a framework for facilitating your small value digital payments in offline mode. Uh, this basically uses your cards, wallets, mobile devices, etc. In order to push the digital transactions in your rural as well as your semi urban areas. Now, the upper limit of an offline payment transaction was not fixed at 500. I think it was rupees 200, if I remember correctly, with a total limit of 2000 at any point in time. 
Now the framework will enable the authorized PSOs and your payment systems participants and your acquirers and your issuers to conduct your small value offline digital payments. So this is obviously going to create a revolution in the rural and the semi-urban areas. That's the context. Now such payment instruments should be enabled for offline transactions based on the explicit consent of the customer and such transactions using cards should be allowed without a requirement to switch on the contactless transaction channel. So that's the whole uh, context right so overall i think i'm convinced with both options two and three being correct uh, the limit was uh, definitely 200 and not 500 that's the correction required here so options two and three are correct and it was fixed at 200 right that's the context right so moving on to question number 24 now so talking about sebi after amending the sebi settlement proceedings regulations has reduced the timeline for filing settlement applications and that timeline i think has been reduced from the existing 180 days down to 60 days if i remember correctly so that's the correct answer in this case yes so moving on to the next question Looking at uh, the Supreme Court, it has basically appointed an inquiry committee headed by former Judge Dash to probe Prime Minister Narendra Modi's security breach in Punjab on 5th of January 2022. So this was obviously a massive security breach that happened and Justice Indu Malhotra has been uh, appointed on the inquiry committee as the head. So that's the context on this one, right? So moving on to the next scenario. Question number 26, talking about the incorrect option for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Meerut, Uttar Pradesh. So he laid the foundation stone of 700 crore Major Dhyan Chand Sports University in Meerut, Uttar Pradesh. Okay, talking about this under uh, Swamitva, the survey of villages, Abadi and uh, mapping with uh, improved technology in village areas. Uh, the Swamitva scheme, the initiative of the Ministry of Panchayati Raj, more than 23 lakh titles or gharonis have basically been given in 75 districts. It also says that the first national sports university, NSU of India, is located in Aswal, the capital of Mizoram, which I don't think is the correct answer. I think it is uh, Manipur Imphal. Anyway, talking about uh, Mr. Modi, he also played, uh, paid a foral tribute at Amar Jawan Jyoti and visited Government Freedom Struggle Museum in uh, Shaheed Smarak in Meerut Cantonment. This is also fine. Dedicated to Major Dhyan Chand, uh, basically an Indian field hockey player, uh, the university will basically graduate uh, 1080 students annually. This also seems to be okay. The only problem I have with is option number C, which is basically not Mizoram, but yes, Imphal, which is the capital of Manipur. That's the context on this one, right? Moving on to question number 27. Recently, which company has purchased a 25.8% stake in Bangalore-based startup Dunzo, Dunzo Digital Private Limited, uh, an Indian company with an investment of US dollar 200 million? That's a massive amount. And the answer in this case is Reliance Retail. And Reliance Retail has done this in order to improve its last mile delivery capabilities, right? So that is the context and the overall value is roughly around 1489 crores. So this is a huge win for Dunzo overall, right? Moving on to question number 28. Which country has uh, basically achieved a continuous high temperature plasma operation for 1056 seconds at a stunning 70 million degrees Celsius at the experimental advanced superconducting tokamak, which is basically uh, east. So context is that it is almost like an artificial sun. And the answer in this case is that it was China which achieved this operation. Right, so this is basically on 6th of January 2022, the experimental uh, advanced superconducting tokamak east, uh, which is also known as the Chinese artificial sun, has achieved this continuous high temperature. Right, that's the context. Okay, moving on to question number 29. Which country is going to become the first to purchase the Brahmos cruise missile system from India? So the answer in this case is Philippines. Right, and the value of this is basically under a 374.96 million dollar deal. That's the context. Okay, now moving on to question number 30. Who's been appointed as the universal accepted ambassador of the global internet body ICANN, which is the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, ICANN, which is supported by the Universal Acceptance Steering Group. So the answer in this case happens to be uh, Paytm's founder, Vijay Shekhar Sharma. Right, that's the context and he's been brought in as the UA ambassador for ICANN. Right, moving on to question number 31. Talking about the first ever Startup India Innovation Week. So the Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, that is DPIIT, organized the first ever Startup India Innovation Week from 10th to 16th of January 2022. Okay, the total number of 46 startups have been recognized as winners of the National Startup Awards 2021 along with one incubator and one accelerator as well. Now, the Union Minister for Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goyal, also launched the Startup India Innovation Week. So, I think all of these statements are correct in this case. All the three are correct statements. Moving on to question number 32. So, in linkage to question 31, first ever National Startup Day was observed on which date this year? So, the answer in this case is January 16th, 2022. So basically, India observed its first ever National Startup Day with the goal of promoting startup culture across the country. The Startup India Initiative basically marked its sixth anniversary 
on 16th of January 2022 and the Startup India program was basically launched on 16th of January 2016 but the first ever National Startup Day basically was from this year on 16th of January right moving on to question number 33 okay talking about the Tiruvalluvar Day right so here the context is Tamils basically observe Tiruvalluvar Day either on 15th or 16th of January as part of the Pongal celebrations uh, Tiruvalluvar's primary work is Tirukkural which is again a very very famous uh, book in in the context of South Indians and this has basically 1330 couplets or kurals as they are called uh, Tamil orator writer and father of the pure Tamil movement uh, Maraimali Adigal had basically stated 31 BC as the birth year of Tiruvalluvar so that's the context I think all the three options in this case are indeed correct right so moving on to the next one which is question number 34 as per the data of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, India's merchandise export in December 2021 was about US dollar 37.29 billion, the highest ever monthly exports achievement, right? So in the context, we're looking at some of the uh, data here. The exports basically was increased by 42% in December 2021 on an annual basis over US dollar 27.22 billion in December 2020. And this was an increase of 37.55 billion over the US dollar 27.11 billion that was there in December 2019. Talking about the imports in December 2021, they also rose by 40% to US dollar 59.27 right uh, due to the increase in oil imports of course by 65.17% uh, to US dollar 15.9 billion so far in FY 2022 we basically find that from the period April till December 2021 the exports rose by 48.85% to 299.74 billion dollars uh, over the US dollar 201.37 billion that was there for the similar period in 2020 and the imports parallelly increased by 69.27% to 443.71 billion dollars over the US dollar 262.13 billion that was there in April to December 2020 which basically leaves us with a trade deficit of uh, 143.97 billion dollars. Hmm, not an easy one because there are a lot of numbers here but if I remember correctly I think uh, the exports increase was not as much I don't remember seeing anywhere that the increase was 40% both in exports and imports I think if I remember correctly both the numbers were in 30% range only so I think the exports was around 37% and somewhere around 38% for imports if I'm not mistaken so I think options 1 and 2 are incorrect right so looking at the options yeah so exports basically increased by 37% and uh, your imports also rose by 38% that's the overall context and that is why options 1 and 2 are incorrect okay so moving on to the next question number 35 which of the following is an incorrect option for the national youth day or the rashtriya yuva divas so year 2022 marked the 159th birth anniversary of swami vivekananda i think this is fine uh, the national youth day 2021 theme was uh, yuva utsah nay bharat ka i don't think this was the correct theme let's try and look at it the day is basically observed every year on 12th of Jan. This is fine. Prime Minister Narendra Modi virtually opened the 25th National Youth Festival in Puducherry on the occasion of the National Youth Day. This is also fine. The National Youth Festival is held every year from the 12th to 16th of January by the Government of India in partnership with one of the states or the Union Territories. This is also fine. Question number 36. Which city has become India's first city to have a water metro project after the launch of its first boat in December 2021, uh, which was basically your Muziris? So the answer in this case is Kochi Kerala, right? So that's the context on this question, right? Moving on to question number 37. Which company has become the title sponsor of the Indian Premier League for 2022 and 2023 seasons? So Vivo has moved out and Tata Group has come in. That's the answer here, right? Moving on to uh, the next one. We're looking at 38 now. Which district has become the first child marriage free district in Odisha? So the answer in this case is Ganjam, the first child marriage free district in Odisha. Right, so declaration has been made after collecting detailed information of all the weddings that took place in 2020 and 2021. Right, moving on to the next question, number 39. Which Indian airport has been ranked 8th under the large airports category and is the only Indian airport to basically enter the top 10 position in the list of uh, or the on-time performance review 2021 airlines and airports uh, which was released by Sirium? So the answer in this case is that the privilege and the honor has gone to the Chennai airport as per uh, the latest details available on this front right so this is the report released by Sirium the on-time performance review 2021 airlines and airports and Chennai International Airport has been ranked 8th globally under the large airports category moving on to the 40th question who's been elected as the chairman of the IFCO or the Indian Farmers Fertilizer Cooperative so the answer in this case is uh, Dilip Sanghani and uh, IFCO also was recently uh, ranked number one in terms of the uh, global ranking in terms of corporates who are on the cooperative side right so basically talking about the high performing cooperatives uh, in terms of turnover as uh, a ratio of gdp per capita uh, so basically you had uh, your ifco being ranked number one in that list in the 
cooperative segment, right? So that is the context on uh, uh, IFCO additionally, and Dilip Sanghani is going to be elected as the chairman, right? Moving on to question number 41 now. Right, so talking about the Global Risks Report 2022, which is the 17th edition. So report has been published by the World Bank. Okay, the results of the Global Risk Perception Survey 2021-2022, which has been the foundation of the report since 2006, are also included. Okay, uh, the climate change is the greatest threat, uh, while social cohesiveness, disintegration, livelihood issues, and mental health degradation are the hazards that have been uh, increased most since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this statement is quite generic and valid as well so if i remember correctly i think it's not a report by world bank it is a report by the world economic forum so that is wef in conjunction with marsh mclennan sk group and zurich insurance group all these uh, entities have come together to basically publish the report and it is not world bank right so moving on to the next question we're talking about number 42 which is the following is incorrect with respect to the viso trends or the world employment and social outlook trends 2022 the report has been published by ilo yeah the report has downgraded its forecast for labor market recovery in 2022, okay, which also seems to be correct, uh, projecting a deficit in hours worked globally equivalent to 52 million full-time jobs. I think this is also correct because a lot of uh, work-related issues were found and the productivity did go down uh, and this is related to the fourth quarter of 2019. This is also fine. The previous full year estimate in May 2021 projected a deficit of 56 million full-time equivalent jobs. I think uh, conceptually I'm not uh, satisfied because you're saying 52 million for this year and the year prior to that, uh, I, I think the projection should be a little lower, right? So the productivity has been downgraded a little uh, more as compared to let's say a full-time number for 2018-19 period, right? So if this was 52 million, this cannot be more than 52 million, this has to be less than 52 million and that is where this option goes wrong. So the 2022 level for those without jobs is estimated at uh, 207 million compared to 186 million in 2019. So I think overall, yes, this number seems to be satisfactory uh, because many people more have lost their jobs and the global unemployment is expected to remain above the pre-COVID levels until at least 2023. So more people are going to be unemployed. Uh, as compared to the pre-COVID levels. This also seems to be fine. So the only problem I have with is option C, uh, wherein I look at the previous full-time estimate in May 21, basically projected a deficit of 56 million. I don't think it can be such a high number. So the answer in this case has to be this, yes. And this number, which was projected in May 2021, was basically 26 million full-time equivalent jobs, right? Moving on to question number 43. Which bank has been named uh, country's first beneficiary bank to reach a milestone of uh, 926 million UPI transactions in a single month? It's a no-brainer here. So it is Paytm Payments Bank, which has achieved this milestone. Right, so PBBL, which is your Paytm Payments Bank Limited, is India's uh, largest and fastest growing UPI beneficiary bank. Right, That's the context. Moving on to the next one, 44. Which state became the first LPG liquefied petroleum gas enabled and smoke free Indian state? So the answer in this case is Himachal Pradesh, which takes the honors on this front. Uh, the success is backed by the central government's Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana and uh, also looking at uh, the Himachal Pradesh government's Mukhya Mantri Grihini Suvidha Yojana. So these two are the initiatives or the schemes which have basically ensured that Himachal Pradesh becomes the first LPG enabled and smoke free Indian state. Right. Moving on to question number 45. Talking about the Union Minister of Jal Shakti, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, announced the third National Water Awards 2020. Uttar Pradesh has been awarded the first prize in the best state category. Muzaffar Nagar in UP is the best district awarded in the Northern Zone. Then talking about the National Water Award, it was first instituted by Jal Shakti Ministry in 2018 in order to recognize and encourage exemplary work and efforts made by the states, districts, individuals, organizations, etc. across the country in attaining the government's vision of a Jal Samrit Bharat. Uh, the awards were not given in six categories. I think it was a different number than this. I think this is where it's gone wrong. The rupees 3.6 trillion Jal Jeevan Mission uh, scheme, which basically aims uh, to ensure uh, assured tap water supply or Har Ghar Jal to all rural households is uh, till the period 2024. So all this also seems to be correct. So this is the only one which seems to be incorrect. So the award, I don't think is in six categories. I think it is slightly more than that. If I look at it, yes, it is 11 categories overall. So best state, best district, best village panchayat, best ULB, best media, best school, best institute, resident welfare association or religious organization for campus usage, best industry, best NGO, best water user association and best industry for CSR activity. So all these are the 11 categories. 
categories that are there okay moving on to the next one 46 talking about the open defecation free odf plus villages under the swachh bharat mission gramin phase 2 program until december 31st 2021 so telangana has stood first among the states in india in the list of highest number of odf plus villages i think this is fine Telangana, I don't think is followed by Maharashtra. I think it's Tamil Nadu, if I remember correctly. Then the next is Karnataka with Gujarat basically taking the 17th position with only 83 villages or basically only 0.45%. Talking about SBM Grameen phase 2 was approved in February 2020 by the Ministry of Jal Shakti to be implemented between 2020-2021 and 2024-25 in a mission mode way with an outlay of uh, rupees 1,40,881 crore rupees. So I think this is also fine. So the only problem I have with is uh, the second statement. So I think option 2 is incorrect, right? That should be the answer in this case. Yeah, because Telangana is followed by Tamil Nadu with 4432 villages. That's the context on this one, right? Moving on to question number 47. Which state will basically host the 2023 Kelo India game? So the answer in this case happens to be Karnataka. And Karnataka Minister for Youth, Empowerment and Sports KC Narayana Gowda announced that Karnataka will host the next Kelo India Games in 2023. And Kelo India Games for 2021 is scheduled to be held in February 2022 at Panchkula, Haryana. That's the context, right? Moving on to question number 48. The Commerce Ministry of India is planning to launch the Brand India campaign in order to give momentum to the exports of services as well as products in the new markets. So the campaign will be launched in the light that India's outbound shipments is set to cross $400 billion in the fiscal year 2021-2022. The Brand India campaign will be run by IBEF which is the India Brand Equity Foundation and the Brand India campaign would serve as an umbrella campaign to promote goods and services exported by India. So I think all of these options are indeed correct. So uh, moving on to the next question, number 48, we're looking at who has become the first woman of color to make a solo unsupported trek to the Earth's South Pole. So the answer in this case is Harpreet Chandi. So she is an Indian origin British Sikh Army officer and uh, she becomes the first woman of color to make a solo unsupported trek to the Earth's South Pole, right? Moving on to the next question, number 50, which institution or organization has launched the Sarathi, a mobile app for educating investors? So the answer in this case is SEBI. Right, moving on to the next question, uh, looking at number 51, who's been appointed as the first woman chairperson and managing director of ONGC on the additional charge. So the answer in this case happens to be Alka Mittal, who's been basically appointed as the first woman CMD of ONGC and she is basically the HR director of ONGC at this point. Right, moving on to the next question, number 52, who's been appointed as the ambassador by the Legends League Cricket to its all-women match official team to promote women's empowerment initiatives of the uh, legends of league cricket and how to increase participation of women in cricket as well. So the answer is Julan Goswami who's been appointed as the brand ambassador of uh, LLC, right? And uh, that's the context on this one. Moving on to question number 53, who's been appointed as the MD and CEO of uh, USFB or Ujjivan Small Finance Bank? So the answer in this case is Ittira Davis. That is the context and uh, he'll basically take over for a one year term from 14th January 2022. Right, moving on to the next one. Who's been appointed as the new chairman of ISRO? So the answer in this case is S. Somanath. That's the context on this. So the ACC has appointed rocket scientist S. Somanath as the chairman of ISRO and the department of, uh, or the secretary of the department of space and he'll basically succeed Dr. K. Sivan. Moving on to the next one, 55. The 19th meeting of the National Tiger Conservation Authority, NTCA, was held under the chairmanship of the Union Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Bhupendra Yadav. So talking about the points on this, Environment Minister launched an action plan for reintroduction, protection and conservation of seven major big cats in India, including the cheetah, which has become extinct in independent India. Okay, so he re uh, released the water atlas as well, mapping all the water bodies in the tiger bearing areas of India. And he also announced that I don't think 24 tiger reserves are there, 14 is the answer here. So of 24 tiger reserves across India have received accreditation of the Global Conservation Assured Tiger Standard, CATS. So I think the answer in this case is not 24, I think it's lesser than that, I think 14 is the correct one, yeah. So that's the context and NTCA is working to get on uh, other tiger reserves uh, evaluated for uh, the CATS accreditation as well. So currently the number is only 14, that's the context, right. Moving on to question number 56, who chaired the first meeting with sectoral exports on governance to formulate a document for Vision India at 2047? So the answer in this case is Dr. Jitendra Singh. Right. So to commemorate the 100th year of the Indian independence, the central government has started work on a vision plan for a future ready India. So Prime Minister has directed all the ministries and departments of the government of India uh, and will basically formulate a document for Vision India 2047 to identify the long term goals and corresponding outcomes for this decade. 
with obviously uh, different timelines and milestones as well. So Dr. Jitendra Singh, Honorable Minister of State has basically chaired the first meeting with the sectoral experts on governance issues and that basically happened on 15th of January 2022. So that's the context on India vision at 2047, right? Moving on to the next one. Uh, Dharmendra Pradhan, Union Minister of Education launched a 100 day reading campaign called as Padhe Bharat. So it basically aims to encourage the reading habit among students and to improve the learning levels of students with a focus on children uh, studying in uh, Balwatika to grade 8. This seems to be okay. The 100 days or 14 weeks reading campaign will be organized from Jan 2022 to April 2022. The campaign is in line with the National Education Policy 2020 which basically promotes joyful reading culture among the students. So I think all the three options are correct in this case. Right, moving on to the next one, 58. We're looking at uh, the Union Minister of State Independent Charge, Dr. Jitendra Singh, launching an AI-driven startup by uh, IIT alumni for water purification through innovative technology and with financial support from uh, TDB, which is the Technology Development Bureau as well. So this project is expected to empower communities to plan and monitor drinking water needs with community ownership and with affordable, accessible, reliable and clean drinking water 24-7 throughout the year. Oh, that is 365 days. This seems to be correct. The company's patented system Clairvoyant uses artificial intelligence to basically optimize purification systems and predict future breakdowns. This also seems to be fine. MOU was also signed between TDB, uh, a statutory body of the Department of SNT and uh, Swajal Water Private Limited. So I think this also is correct. So all three options appear to be correct in this case. Right, so moving on to question number 59. Uh, the Union Minister of Education, uh, basically Dharmendra Pradhan, launched NEET, which is your National Education Alliance for Technology 3.0, a single platform to provide the best developed edtech solutions and courses to the students. Under NEET 3.0, more than 12 lakh socially and economically disadvantaged students uh, basically received free edtech courses uh, in terms of coupons worth Rs 253 crore. This seems to be okay. Niti Ayog is the facilitator? I don't think so. Uh, anything to do with uh, education in this context, I think AICT is the body which is associated with this one. Let's try and correct, check that. So NEET has basically uh, 58 global and Indian startup education technology companies with 100 courses and e-resources also seems to be fine. So I have only problem with option number 2. Uh, so only option 2 is incorrect because it's not uh, Niti Ayog in this case which is the facilitator but it is AICTE, right? Moving on to the next one, question number 60. The IT Minister uh, Ashwini Vaishnav basically launched the India Semiconductor Mission ISM to attract large investments for setting up semiconductor wafer fabrication facilities in India. Obviously, in the context of the severe shortage of semiconductor uh, chips in India, this definitely seems to be a good move, right? So, talking about ISM, it is basically a specialized and independent business division within the Digital India Corporation, which seems to be fine. Uh, December 15, 2021, the Union Cabinet has approved the ISM, which will basically act as a nodal agency for efficient and smooth implementation of the schemes on semiconductors and display ecosystems. It also seems to be fine. The fiscal support of up to 50% of the project cost with a ceiling of Rs 12,000 crore per fabrication will be provided for the scheme for setting up display fabs, which aims to attract large investments in manufacturing TFT LCD, which is a thin film transistor liquid crystal display or the AMOLED display panels. So I think all of these options seems to be correct to me. Uh, so in this case, all three are indeed correct with respect to the India Semiconductor Mission, right? So moving on to the next question, number 61. Who has released the commemorative postal stamp on COVID-19 vaccine to mark the first anniversary of India's national COVID-19 vaccination program on 16th of January 2022? So the answer in this case is Dr. Mansuk Mandavia. So on 16th of January 2022, Mr. Mandavia, Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare, basically released a commemorative postal stamp on COVID-19 vaccine to mark the first anniversary of India's national COVID-19 vaccination program. So that's the answer on this one. So moving on to question 62. Talking about the India State of Forest Report 2021. So the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Sri Bhupendra Yadav, has released the report and has been prepared by the Forest Survey of India. Seems to be fine. So talking about the total forest and tree cover of the country is basically at 80.9 million hectare, which is 24.62% of the geographical area of the country. Seems to be okay. The state of Telangana has shown the highest increase in the forest cover. I'm not so sure about this one. 17 states and territories have basically above 33% of the geographical area under forest cover, which is a significantly good number. So the uh, Forest Survey of India in collaboration with SAC, the Space Application Center, ISRO, initiated a special study for estimation of the above ground biomass, AGB, at the pan-India level using the L band of uh, synthetic aperture radar data, SAR data. So I think this also is uh, fine. The only option which is incorrect is uh, option C. I don't think it is Telangana, which is the highest. Telangana is there in the top three, but not the highest. Yeah, so basically the top three states uh, in terms of forest cover are Andhra Pradesh, followed by Telangana and then Odisha. That's the context overall. 
so that is the uh, answer in terms of increase in forest cover right moving on to question number 63 which of the following is an incorrect option for uh, the report of the second quarter which is q2 fy22 july to september 2021 or the quarterly employment survey uh, which is a part of the all india quarterly establishment uh, based employment survey acquis so it has been released by union minister bhupendra yadav uh, ministry of labor and employment this seems to be fine uh, the estimated total employment in nine non farm sectors is basically 3.1 crores approximately which is 2 lakhs higher than the estimated employment of 3.08 crores uh, from the first round of qes and uh, this was released on september 27 2021 this is, seems to be fine the overall percentage of female workers stood at 32.1% higher than q1 fy22 which is good uh, where it was uh, 29.3 uh, in q1 fy22 the study covers establishments with 20 or more i don't think it is 20 or more employees it's more inclusive than that i think it is 10 or more employees and nearly 90% of the establishments have been estimated to work with less than 100 workers this also seems to be fine and i think it was a more inclusive list here which basically includes employees of organizations where the minimum number of employees is 10 or more that's the context right so basically the study covers establishments with 10 or more employees that's the correct answer in this case right moving on to question number 64 talking about the fifa football awards the best fifa men's player robert lewandowski poland correct best fifa women's player alexia putelas is also correct the awarded ceremony was basically uh, virtually organized at fifa's headquarters in zurich switzerland this also is correct so i think all three options are correct in this case right moving on to question number 65 so who has won the men's singles at the yonex sunrise india open 2022 badminton tournament so the answer in this case happens to be lakshya sen who's basically won it for the men's singles so the women's singles has been won by bisanan ongbam rungfan of thailand and the men's doubles has been won by uh, satvik sairaj rankireddy and chirag shetty and then women's double has been won by nuntakam amsar of thailand and benyappa amsar of thailand right that's the context on uh, the yonex sunrise india open 2022 Moving on to number sixty-six, who's the author of the biography of Nitandi Subhash Chandra Bose titled "Bose: The Untold Story of an Inconvenient Nationalist"? So the answer in this case is Chandrashool Ghosh. So Penguin Random House India announced the acquisition and uh, publication of the critical biography of Nitandi Subhash Chandra Bose by Chandrashool Ghosh, uh, who is basically a prominent researcher, a founder of the Pressure Group Mission Nitaji. That's the context, and the book is poised to open a window to many other to untold and unknown stories of Netaji. That's the context on sixty-six. Moving on to question number sixty-seven: Which country has taken over as the chair of the United Nations Security Council's Counterterrorism Committee? So the answer in this case happens to be India for the year twenty twenty-two, and the committee will be chaired by T. S. Thirumurthy. and that is the context overall who's happening to be the india's permanent representative to the united nations so that's the context on the united nations security council's counter terrorism committee for 2022 right moving on to question number 68 who will chair the 20 member mdac or the market data advisory committee that has been reconstituted by the sebi so the answer in this case happens to be your uh, s sahu that's the context on this one So essentially, this committee will basically look into areas like security, market, uh, data access, and privacy. So that brings us to the close of question sixty-eight, where the answer is yes, Sahu. Moving on to question number sixty-nine, talking about the correct option with respect to the World Braille Day. So United Nations World Braille Day is annually observed across the globe on fourth of January. This seems to be fine. So the day marks the birth anniversary of the nineteenth-century French educator Louis Braille, who basically invented Braille. a universally accepted system of reading and writing uh, used by and for blind persons also fine year 2022 marks the observance of the fourth world braille day and the 213th birth anniversary of louis braille so all of these seem to be correct in this case i think all three options are correct right so moving on to question number 70 So we're looking at uh, which of the following is the correct option with respect to the World Hindi Day, also known as Vishwa Hindi Divas. So the day is annually observed across the globe on 10th of January to promote worldwide use of Hindi language. I think this is fine. The day also marks the anniversary of the World Hindi Conference, which was held on uh, 10th of January 1975. This also seems to be fine. And the first ever World Hindi Day was observed on 10th of January 2006. I think all these statements are again correct. right so all these are correct indeed and moving on to question number 71 now talking about the multilateral anti submarine warfare aswf exercise called as sea dragon 22 so the exercise is being conducted by uh, united states in the anderson air force base guam in the western pacific right so which are the six countries involved here so the six nations participating are us australia canada india japan and south korea 
Uh, it is basically a US led exercise that focuses on anti submarine warfare and maritime security challenges in the Indo Pacific region. That's the context. So, I think all of these statements uh, are indeed correct. So, it is option A. All the three statements are correct, right? Moving on to question number 72. Talking about the Ministry of Culture that has partnered with CSCs or the Common Service Centers, uh, a special purpose vehicle under the Ministry of Electronics and IT that is METI to undertake India's first ever cultural survey of its villages titled Mera Gaon Meri Dharohar through a mobile application has been initiated, right? So talking about uh, the statements here, as per the agreement, CSC or the Common Service Centers will basically develop a mobile application and train the VLEs or the village level entrepreneurs in conducting the survey. This is fine. Over 4 lakh VLEs will conduct the survey in 6.38 lakh villages and upload the details on the application. It also seems to be fine. And the survey is expected to be completed by mid-2022. So I think all of these statements are indeed correct. Right, so moving on to question number 73 talking about the Veer Bal Divas. So the government of India has decided to proclaim 26th December of every year as the Veer Bal Divas in order to honor the sacrifice of Sahib Zada Zorahar Singh and Sahib Zada Fateh Singh, the third and fourth sons of the 10th Sikh Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, to define the dignity and honor of Sikhism. So the first ever Veer Bal Divas was basically observed on 26th of December 2022. So on 26th of December 1725, Sahib Zada Zorahar Singh and Sahib Zada Fateh Singh were executed after being sealed alive in a wall. Uh, so their sacrifices have definitely finally been uh, accounted for but I think the year was not 1725 or 1705 if I'm not mistaken and that is where this option goes wrong yeah so that is the context on this one so option only one and two are correct right so that's on 73 moving on to question number 74 uh, so recently a telecommunication engineering center under the department of telecommunication ministry of communications released a report titled code of practice for securing consumer internet of things so this is a report which talks about the baseline requirement aligned with the global standards and best practices to secure consumer IoT devices. Now as per the projections, there may be 26.4 billion IoT devices and services that are there globally by 2030. I think 2030 is too far a timeline, 26.4 billion to se pehle hi aa So I think this number is incorrect. Now as per the National Digital Communication Policy NDCP 2018 released by the Department of Telecommunication, an ecosystem is needed for 5 billion connected devices by 2022. This also seems to be fine. Now this is a, a report that has basically been released for the use by IoT device manufacturers, service providers, system integrators and application developers. So this generic statement is also correct. So the only statement I have a problem with is one because I don't think 26.4 billion will be the number in 2030. By 2030 the number will be significantly higher. So I think the year is slightly lesser than that. So if I look at it, yeah, only option two and three are correct because this is what is expected by 2026 and not 2030. Right, so moving on to question number 75. Who's been appointed as the vice president of the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank for a period of three years from 2022 till 2025 from 1st of February 2022? The answer in this case is ex-RBI Governor Urjit Patel. So that's the context on this one. Moving on to the bonus question for today. So we're talking about uh, the Reserve Bank, which has basically announced the construction of a composite RBI digital payments index uh, with effect from March 2018. And March 2018 was taken as the base year in order to capture the extent of digitization of payments across the country. Now the index for September 2021 has been recently released by the RBI and the value basically stands at 304.06 as against 270.59 that was there in March 2021 which means that when I take March 2018 as the base the value was 100 and it has constantly gone increasing since September 2021 has also increased to 304.06 it basically shows that there is significantly higher penetration in terms of digital payments in the country right that is the context now the question is which of the following is not one of the five broad parameters the payment enablers yes Payment infrastructure, both demand side and supply side. Demand side has a weightage of 10% and supply side had a weightage of 15%. This is also correct. I don't think it was payment security. I think it was payments performance that is important and not security from this perspective because security gets covered in the infrastructure angle itself. Customer centricity as always is definitely an important point. So I think the correct answer in this case is option D, which is not payment security, but it is payments performance, which has a weightage of 45% and the highest weightage in the RBI DPI, right? So that is what I had in store for you today in terms of the 75 questions and one bonus question as well. Right, so that brings us to the end of this particular session of the Rapid Fire, wherein we looked at 75 plus one bonus question for the month of uh, January 2022, up till whatever has been uh, covered in the last three weeks. And I enjoyed delivering this session for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Right, And the most important aspect is I keep 
harping about and keep telling you guys is that stay calm, stay focused, have confidence in your abilities and the results will automatically follow. Calm rahiye, composed rahiye, focus tarikhe se preparation kariye, apne aap pe ek self-belief rakhiye, right? Results zaroor aapko achieve honge, right? So wishing you all the best for the upcoming exam and uh, this is Ravi signing off and I look forward to seeing you in the next session but until then, have a great day and a wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead. See you guys.